Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 48, no, 518. Wow, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stopping us short. That's a lot of Tuesdays. And uh, I gotta I, I make sure they all count. And they do all count. It's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter in Pittsburgh, PA, uh, the home of, uh, well, we were graced with badass Billy Gunn this past weekend, I know, at the International Wrestling Cartel. And that, and that counts for something in this episode, and you'll find out why in a moment. But I have coming at you from uh, Poughkeepsie, New York. He's the only one amongst the crew that has a future endeavor letter from the WWE itself. It's Mad Mike. That's me, Sorg, and I, for one, cannot wait for your uh, upcoming memoir, Tuesdays with Sorgi. <laughs> it could be it. <laughs> that really could be it at this point. Uh, a, a hundred, uh, a thousand Tuesdays will be it in another five years whenever we... Uh, we uh, you know, we 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 finally wrap the show, um, but we got a special guest with us tonight, keeping the streak alive. He is a referee with the International Wrestling Cartel. I don't even know all the places you work, so I know you pop up a lot. Uh, but Bobby Williams is with us, Ref Potter. Some people may just know him as Potter if they're around the uh, the Indies in the area. But uh, with us, join us on the show. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Um, I still don't understand the whole Potter thing. So maybe somebody can uh, clue me in. I'll be. I will need a whole other podcast for that. But I, but here's a. So here's a. Bit Do you of, have a dark wizard pursuing you? Maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> that might have something to do with it. Also, uh, if you lived under stairs at one point in your life, I can't confirm that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but also, a bit of trivia, uh, Potter here, also a former Rosebud. Absolutely. Got to do it one time. And I will say that it was it was an interesting experience to dance like that because uh, I don't dance ever. <laughs> what, what was your Rosebud costume? Um, I was a, like an Andy Warhol blue-haired thing that danced around with a very shiny shirt. Mm-hmm. And also, oh, go ahead, Mike. Oh, no, I just said awesome. And also join us. He just got in. He just got his invite. I'm glad. I'm so glad he could join us so we have another uh, mind on us. But uh, live from San Antonio, Texas, with the hair. No, leave your hair down, man. Leave your hair down. It looks yeah, good. Yeah, leave that Kristen Shaw this... hair working. Yeah, yeah Again, not even close. Um, but hey, I'm here. Hold on. I'm trying to find your camera. <laughs> so bear with me, Eamon. So, just... they can, so they can see this hair? Yeah, they, yeah, they got to see the hair. I got to turn the thing on. You, you got to bear with me for a moment here. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, while I'm trying to fix that here on the slide, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can find us at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, where you subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. And also, we are live streaming tonight on Facebook Live, so I'm hoping you're following that Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page, and you can join us there, as well as the usual place, Live.WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 8 p.m. Eastern time uh, over there. You can join us. That's where the main chat room is and a lot of the conversation. But we're hoping we uh, get a few hangers on uh, uh, kind of join us over the uh, the Facebook page as well. You'll get a notification when we go live here on Tuesday nights and everything. And you know, whether whether Eamon's hair is 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 prepared or not for you out there. Or can uh, I send a special message to Facebook? What, what are you, uh, send a special message to Facebook, Mike. Hi, everyone's moms that just learned how to use Facebook 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Boy. Hi, all awkward ants that we forget their names. Hi. <laughs> Boy, are you in for a treat with this one, uh, uh, moms out there on um, Facebook land? I apologize for my language. <laughs> exactly. And we got Eamon's face here uh, uh, as well. You can also join us. Drop us a line, 412-206-WMS0, or at uh, that email address. Good time. Good time. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And you can also uh, check us out. We're streaming every once in a while over at The405Media.com, our good friends over there. And also you can support us on Patreon like our good friends, TheWrestlingRevolution.net, uh, Antonio Garza. Mo diggity! Woo! Ed Burke, Alex Cars of PowerToTheSmarks.com, or is it .net? 
Try both of them. Uh, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Benefit. You can support the show there. State of the Mayhem show uh, just came out for those Patreon uh, subscribers. Uh, so if you uh, uh, give money to the show, you get uh, some benefits like that and the Mayhem show gold, uh, some extra stuff that we record. And I um, <laughs> just heard the woo on our line <laughs> uh, in the background. Um, but... Um, uh, uh, but that's okay if you don't toss money at us. That's fine. Um, um, you can just share the show, help the Mayhem Show Nation grow. And thank you to a lot of people joining the show, maybe first timers here checking out the show. Uh, I know a lot of people are checking out the the clips and the other alternative shows over on, on the Facebook page. And it's cool to see that Mayhem Nation grow. Uh, well, from nations that are growing to ones that are are horribly shrinking um, to, with the WWE, we'll get to. Actually, let's let's talk, let's start off with that. I think that's the big story of the week is um, um, the people that were let go. Of course, we talked about Ryback last week. Strangely, not one that was let go as part of uh, the, the, the the spring cleaning that happens with WWE. Yeah, yet he does have a contract, and they have uh, marked down all of his stuff on on WWE shop. So we'll see. But in the meantime, and uh, does anybody have a list handy of all the guys that got let go here? Um, I, I have pretty much all of them in my head. So. Oh, oh, yeah. uh, M- M- Mike is the historian, since that's part of what he did at WWE. Uh, it, so so uh, what, who all do we have let go? Well, you got your um, your poor, poor Damien Sandow. The biggest one, the, I think the biggest, not shock, but the, the biggest saddening of the mm-hmm. internet. And from the biggest one to the littlest ones, uh, El Torito and Hornswoggle. Jeez. Uh, Cameron, and uh, let's see. Oh man, I had the rest of it. How, how can you forget game. Alex Riley? Uh, that's because he hasn't gotten killed by Samoa Joe yet. First, you mean Nakamura? Nakamura, yes. Yeah, uh, Alex Riley got released. He can rage somewhere else, maybe in Evolve. Uh, Jeez, I just I don't know. know. I just don't know how he passed any of the uh, wellness tests. I. <laughs> He, he's he's a special someone, I gotta say. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, I believe also Santino uh, was released officially. I don't count that because I could have swore I read a release a while ago, but that Santino was released. I think he was still on doing like some like like he was there on retainer, maybe I guess. Yeah, because he's okay. been he's been injured and in, in kind of semi retired for for a good while, but he's he's popped up a few times, so I think he still had an ongoing contract with them somehow. Um, I think so, yeah. The one that saddens me the most, aside from the Sandow and, and surprises me is a little bit, is is Zeb Coulter, you know? Yeah. Uh, not that they were doing much with him, but I always thought he was a character that, that they had a lot more they could do, especially with the current political environment. Um, you know, but... But who knows? I mean, they're, they're just that's why we have Bob Backlund, Sork. And then there's Bob Backlund. That's a, that can be a whole other segment later in the show. Uh, well, I'm glad that's going to save Darren Young's career. Uh, but uh, but aside from that, I, it's not a lot of surprises. Like, well, the only girl that got, got let go was Cameron, which um, I'm glad that her pin, her her Kamala pin, has been making the rounds on the internet lately. Um, <laughs> after that, uh, so. You know, from a tough enough winner to total diva, like she had a pretty good run in there for as talented as she was. You, you know what I have to say about Cameron leaving Sorg? Hmm. Girl, bye. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think apparently, she- uh, uh, as I as I was looking it up, we we have another release apparently, like in the hour, at least no. according to four one one mania of a. Uh, Apparently, the Brooklyn Brawler has been released. What? What? That's shocking. Yeah. Jesus, he's been there almost longer than Vince. Yeah, it's saying in the article for over 30 years. Wow, that's... That's... Like, did he, he have, like, have fucked up. is he the guy that, like, is he maybe the guy that has been there so long he had that weird tenured contract and somehow made made more than most of the roster for as much as he did? Like, was he an agent, technically? Like, what was yeah. he? From what I said, yeah, Steve Lombardi was an agent. He was an he agent. Was agent. He, uh, uh, some people, like, I'm reading this thing. He says he was mainly a backstage role where he oversaw and produced promos. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, I, I mean, he had sort of a backstage role, I guess, in WWE. But, yeah, that's going to... It's kind of surprising. Mm-hmm. Uh, Potter, what do what do you um, um, what what do you think of this this kind of lineup of everybody that got let go this this past week? You know, I think Cameron shot herself in the foot with her uh, 
with her uh, tweet that she put out about the, the bullying or whatever it was. But I, I think that hurt her. I mean, she really hasn't done anything since she was a Funkadactyl. So I'm not surprised by that one. Sandow, I think they missed the, the boat on that one. Mm-hmm. Everybody else, uh, I, I can't say that I blame them for, for cutting them loose. Alex Riley wasn't doing anything. Um, El Torito, I mean, with the uh, the Matadors now coming back is something else. He was kind of useless. Hornswoggle hasn't been on TV in how long? Mm-hmm. Well, he I'm also popped a wellness up. test. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. So then I'm guessing we'll see Adam Rose go. Yeah. I, I think he's the next one on the on the chopping block. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, to me, at least from the stuff as of late, uh, I would probably say Rose and Ryback are, are kind of the two that – because there was rumors that there's going to be more coming. Like this isn't the yeah. end of the releases. Um, right, yeah. They said something about by the end of May, I think, is going to there, – there's going to be quite a few more. Yeah. So right, I would not. I, I would not be surprised to see that. Eamon, if that's true, um, this is a public service announcement. Jack Swagger, do not answer your phone. I can see Swagger going as well. Don't yeah. answer your phone, Jack. Don't do it unless you've talked to people in Lucha. Then I would I'm, answer that phone. But I, I think it's obviously this change has been necessary. I feel um, uh, for the most part because of. Obviously, particularly with NXT, and then particularly now the talent from NXT that are being brought up to the main roster, like there's an influx of talent right now. So it's 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 I think natural to sort of clear out, you know, mm-hmm. talents that have kind of overstayed their welcome, maybe, or, or ones that like a like a Torito or Hornswoggle that aren't necessarily needed anymore. Well, like, there's I, no real I, need for them. Yeah, I agree with you completely on that. I, I love the new change with with the NXT guys coming up. I was blown away by by uh, Big Cass last night. I thought that was really a really cool segment. Yeah, and and just the amount of talents they're even bringing in right now it's 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 kind of it's kind of I think a lot of what you were seeing in like sort of the early two thousands of the Attitude Era, where like you know you had all these great stars like the Radicals were coming in and Jericho mm-hmm. and. And all these amazing stars from other companies were coming in, so the talent, the lower card talents, kind of had to either do something else or, or kind of get flushed out. And I think that's kind of that's kind of what the case of what we're seeing right but here. Here's what I here's what I wonder about, like a guy like Sanda. If if you have a guy who you know can get over, mm-hmm. you know is a good, why are you letting him go, and why not give him a chance to reboot himself? I, in NXT, like Tyson Kidd did. I the, wonder. The, the Sandow, I, it, there, the Sandow I, one is frustrating. There I has feel. to be something. Sandow, ha, there has to have been a personality issue with him in management. There has because he was he was put out there for not even a jobber match. Like I think it's something where where somebody got beat up or Corbin or something got beat up by Ziggler, but he was introduced with the no entrance, you know, back from break thing, and the crowd went insane. Mm-hmm. Right, and and what has he done since last wrestle last year's WrestleMania? Like, I, there 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 is something to this puzzle that's been missing. That like he wasn't supposed to get over, obviously, or he, he you know just somebody does not like him. I'm wondering if they're going to do the same thing that they did with uh, Sammy Callahan when he got released, mm-hmm. where they told him go out. Find a character that suits you, get that character over, give you something to do on the indies, and then we'll bring you back later. Right. That'd be interesting. Because they had because they have nothing for him right now. Hey, look at Luke Gallows. He got let go after how many different things with the WWE. Went out, right. made a buzz as part of the Bullet Club and everything. AJ coming in certainly helps. So so he got to kind of slide in with that. Um and give Carl Anderson a random, you know, uh, a foot in the door as well. Uh, and, and now I got, it's all- I got a fun fact for you. Hmm. I wrestled Luke Gallows in his first match. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. Yep. <laughs> in his first match. Wow. So how was he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was awful. I have it on VHS tape. That dates it for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to have a special watch party for that one. Uh, I, I did Absolutely. not mention you. You also, uh, uh, Potter here is a is, is a trained wrestler. 
uh, has been for years uh, uh, as well as a referee. Uh, so, so a little bit of insight there as well. Um, oh, I, I, I meant to plug in your intro earlier uh, because I, I, I mentioned beforehand while we we're getting ready. Uh, check out the one SF jeez uh, one SF podcast. Um, you can find it on iTunes uh, uh, with uh, BC Steel that we had on last week. Uh, a good conversation on episode three with, with Bobby Williams about his career and a lot about Pittsburgh wrestling. It was, it was really interesting stuff because I haven't been around as long as you guys. And uh, mm. and to get some of that insight is really cool. And a lot of uh, people that we've had on the show, a lot of insight about that stuff too. So, um, but uh, okay, so, so Sandow. Sandow's, uh, you know, everybody's saying across the board. I think Justin Labar, all the guys out there are saying, if anybody has a good chance, even our Facebook group uh, was saying, if anybody has the best chance out of this group that got let go, it's Sandow. Oh, definitely. Just, I mean, already he's booked on uh, Wrestle Pro Global Force. Wait, what is is this Global Force Wrestling? I don't think so. No. This, no, is, this no, is something no, else. They right? actually have shows. Okay. <laughs> oh. Uh, so his first ever, his first advertised appearance June 11th uh, in Keyport, New Jersey. Uh, so there you go. Uh, you can check that out at wrestleproonline.com. Your fonts are really tough, guys. Um, I think Zeb Coulter has a chance of getting on our show. You think so? I really do. I w- well, he's got the experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he definitely does, and I he's got the personality. Like he's got the the screen presence. Like. Oh. TNA would kill to use him. Oh, well, wait, 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 I want to see him isn't work that, Actually, isn't he's he was behind the scenes in TNA for years. He was a writer. He was a writer. Yeah, yeah he was the head writer for a while. Yeah, because, because don't forget that that is Dutch Mantel. You know, mm-hmm. the, the the a very long time classic wrestler and good friend of Steve Austin. If you ever hear those stories, actually go go check out the podcast that he was on. That because he was that that that's <laughs> that hearing them shoot the shit is pretty cool. Um, but, uh, like, yeah, he, he doesn't need to be Zeb Coulter somewhere else. Like he can be, Oh yeah, no, he doesn't, but he just has such a great presence that mm-hmm. he'd be wasted if he wasn't used on camera at some point. Exactly. Exactly. And, and of course, I mean, also the list of what's your wish list, wish list for, uh, for Lucha Underground. <laughs> yeah. For Damian Sandow. Yeah. I want Damian Sandow to be El Lucha Presidente. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I, I want Damian Sandow to be the guy that the crooked cop's boss reports to. This well, is also like, I think it was Tonio that mentioned uh, once or at least that, but as far as like people we want to see in Lucha Underground, uh, Charita would be a perfect fit under his old, you know, cause he was a, a Mexican wrestler. Like he was, uh, you know, he would fit perfectly in that world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and also an interesting uh, message that they're saying, Hey, we're done with midget wrestling, you know, after having a few, I think, I think it's fine. The, like we mentioned a lot on this show, like the style of WWE has changed mm-hmm. and I, they still appeal to a younger audience, but it doesn't have to be midgets. Like, like you don't need midgets. It's, and it's can, also, can we have season four, a trio's team of Hornswoggle, Torito and Masquerita Sagrada. Oh God. <laughs> can we please have that? <laughs> to Joseph, if you're listening. Probably. <laughs> maybe. Please. Season four. Trio Steve. Make it happen. Make it happen. Um, other than that, I, you know, and you're right. It, it, this is, um, it, it, with this influx of talent, how many people, it seems like every other week somebody news popping up on NXT, and half of them just showed up on Raw. Um, it, it, if he didn't get that huge thing that you got at Mania, uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Zach Dryden was going to be on that list. That's true, too. That's least. true, too. Um, yep. uh, you know, it, 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 it's it's hard to it's hard to hide at catering now, right? <laughs> it, 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 it is what you can say there. Uh, I mean, it, it is, and and even like someone like Cameron, Cameron, somebody I said that, that at least like stepped up and said, "I need more help," you know, which I think is sad that she had to do that, to be honest. But but you know, and and she didn't develop. Now, Eva Marie, Eva Marie's done something, right? Amy? Eva Marie's I, Eva's been putting in the work. Yeah, I mean, she's not where they want her to be yet, but she is improving. Cameron, in her match with Asuka, just no. <laughs> like, well, I, well, the Asuka one was good just from a from a you know ridiculous perspective, but also like I think she had that match with Alexa Bliss that one week that was just not mm-hmm. good at all. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she didn't have a lot of. There's some people that just aren't fit for this. Like it's 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 a very hard thing, and especially in WWE, where like it's such a competitive 
uh, business. You know, it's right. Yeah. You know. Well, the great cleans- cleansing of 2016 carries on. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. Brooklyn Brawler. That still blows my mind. Who else? Who else do we think is next? If there is another round coming up. Um. Everybody in that uh, Golden Truth fan, whatever the fuck feud. <laughs> oh no! Don't don't subject Tyler Breeze to that. Wouldn't Aww. it be awful if Tyler got released? It would be. It would be. You got you got brought up to Raw to be let go to be to be Scotty Goldman. You know what I mean? I mean it's. Uh, I want to say almost anybody from Social Outcast. Yeah. Unfortunately, right? Yeah, uh, which is sad. Yeah, it is. I mean, because there's there's talent there, and I I feel like the Adam even the Adam Rose thing just doesn't feel like his fault, you know. I, I they did weird, stupid things with his with his uh with his story with his character. I, you know, I I don't know. It just feel it, it just feels like they give up the ghost on these things, and and they just lose steam, and they're like, you know, that part I feel like Ryback's right. You know, it, it feels yeah. like the writing team gives up on these these characters and everything more than oh nobody's reacting with you. You know, it's like well, right. Well, because that was the thing with Sandow. I feel is like you, he it, the fact that he was getting a reaction, yeah. for not doing anything should give you incentive to keep him. Like it's you know, I, it the fact you you should be releasing people that have no real kind of forward momentum at all. Yeah, you know what I mean, and, and seem like lost causes. Uh, as far as predictions go, um, uh, I, unless they want to repackage one of them, uh, but I would, I, I would see the Ascension going. Uh, yeah, that, that's who I would think as well. They haven't done anything. They, they don't have an original look. They just, they're sloppy in the ring. I'm not a fan. Yeah, and well, because then also Connor got the one violation as well. So it's true. Yeah, it's. I, I could see them getting rid of them. Um, yeah. I, I don't know why, but I think Eric Rowan's going. I can see that as well. Yeah. They, I, I think they're going to keep Braun. They would definitely keep uh, Harper because he's. A Where have player. okay? Because I, I know Bray's been injured, but like, Harper how lost. unfortunate is that that like Bray's injured? He's off TV, but we don't see any of the other guys. Anymore. They got well, Usoed. That's so sad. Yeah. Oh, well, like, well, and also, also the the ones that are not injured were Rowan and Braun. Mm-hmm. So without yeah. Wyatt. There, you can't just throw them out there. What are you going to do? Make the big guys lose like you do with the Ascension? You know, I, I, I just, you know, although it would be fun to have them, like, they have nobody controlling them. They're the loose cannons, and they're tearing things up. But I, Well, they kind of tried that once. Did, did mm-hmm. they? And it didn't work. And then Luke Harper had weird eyes on his Titantron, and, and Eric Rowan got negative pops. Uh, and Eric Rowan yeah. uh, started doing Rubik's Cubes and had a winery. Yeah. God, what the fuck was that feud? <laughs> He was he was in the main event with that. Like he was he was in like main event feuds with that. It's mm-hmm. ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, those were the days. Like it feels like they haven't been around long enough for those weird singles pushes, like the the Bubba Ray Dudley in in shorts push to happen to Rowan. You yeah, know? like 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 the Reverend Devon. Yeah, the Reverend D- Devon. Right, Rowan got the Rowan got Devon a little bit, I think. So yeah. that's why, like, I. I like I'm I'm very happy for this whole cast thing, like cast getting like kind of a them still doing stuff with cast even though Enzo's out. Yeah. Um, because the reputation of tag teams, even either splitting or going on the fence, like the the success rate of that is like usually like zero to none, zero to none. Like it's bad. But like, hey, hey, if it wasn't for something like that, we wouldn't have Kalisto just being amazing in singles, right? Um, yeah, I think I think they're learning from that and like, like giving like, well, we can't just stop this momentum. We have one of them that's better than nothing. Let's see what we can do with them. And I think we had a really good, they had a really good opportunity they did with Cass and and really kind of established him as. It does help that he's seven foot tall and can actually talk. Um, yeah, so, and then he gets a huge pop. Yeah, because of that music. Yeah, exactly. I, I think if it wasn't for Callisto, we would see uh, Sin Cara being booted as well. I, think, I still yeah. think we could. I still think we could because mm. if you fire Sankara, then Kalisto is going to be fine. Yeah, Kalisto oh, absolutely. Gonna be fine. And then they don't have to like keep randomly pairing the Lucha Dragons up to still remind us that Sankara exists. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's like a weird faction, right? Um, like if you're not going to feud the Lucha Dragons, you don't need Sankara. 
or he's the sacrificial lamb when you need somebody, uh, whoever's challenging for the U.S. title, to to to, to job somebody out, right? So you know, uh, before we end this conversation, I I suggest we all give a bold pick on somebody being released. Ooh, I like this. Like like a pick that could come out of nowhere uh, for the new releases. I got because uh, I already came to my mind. Okay, uh, I would. For some something tells me a real shocker would be like Del Rio gets released again. <laughs> <laughs> like okay, because okay. what is he doing after the League of Nations stuff? Nothing. Right. right. Nothing. And they can't fire Sheamus because he's going to be in a big movie this summer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Rusev is the winner of the League of Nations right now. Um, Rusev was much. always the winner in the League of Nations. <laughs> <laughs> he, was. he was. He was. He can Rusev his way out of anything. Um, I'm I gonna... like how they literally just did a hard reboot on Rusev last night. Yeah. They yeah. just literally rebooted him. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go Alicia Fox. Where's her place in the oh, Divas Revolution? Wow, yeah. I love her, but what... <laughs> There's the, the we I, if it wasn't that we already got rid of I don't want to call it dead weight but a lot of crowd in the in the uh, former divas division, mm-hmm. um uh, you know Alicia Fox I think would have been gone already just because what did they do with her she's not well a, there's no, there's no team Bella now there's no team Bella she's not a face they throw on anything like Natty's a really good like like total divas face. And the heart legacy and everything, like um, you know, I, she's just she's good for that, and and obviously doing great stuff right now with Charlotte as, as she usually does. Um, and the most interesting thing Alicia Fox was doing was teaming with the Bellas and having decent, you know, kind of secondhand matches. Right? I mm. I, I just feel like they're it's just a ah, what are you doing for us? You know? And I think Alicia should go to NXT freshen up yeah i could see that, that wouldn't be a bad move yeah yeah i mean look at emma i mean look at emma and now dana you know um mm-hmm. i love the this 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 thing that happens when you know the sankara zach Ryder emma thing where let's go to nxt let's start over not you know the old miz please get injured so i can come back and get repackaged thing. yeah like mike mentioned the the toxic kid thing like Tyson yeah. Kidd, Tyson Kidd probably would have been on the, on some sort of chopping block if he didn't completely reinvent himself in NXT. Yeah, yeah, he definitely. I mean, he saved his job. I mean, absolutely, absolutely. You get to go and experiment. There, it's like, it's like a strange skunk works for WWE, right? To 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 re repackage, redo, and and, and bring them back. And and I think that's that's really cool. It's not just the new stars. It's also recycling. Mm-hmm. That's weird. All right. Um, my, my bold prediction is not someone on camera, but rather someone behind the scenes. Michael Hayes. <laughs> oh, that's no, not... no, that, no. That's my bold prediction. Like, it, it, our, I, I don't believe that's ever going to happen, though. I, like he once almost pit, he once almost pissed on Linda McMahon and he kept his job for another 10 years. Like, yeah, <laughs> but now he's in the Hall of Fame and now they literally have no reason to keep him around. Lossie <laughs> doesn't. Say the N word to somebody else, stupid. Uh, we'll be okay. Well, Sorg. <laughs> just, it's inevitable. Sorg, that's in the lyrics for Bad Street USA. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Potter, what about you? What's your what's your bold pick? Mine's mine's a toss up between either Zack Ryder or Tyler Breeze. Mm-hmm. I just have a feeling one of them's going to go. Mm-hmm. And it, that would be so it, sad. I'd be surprised by it, but I, I could just see one of them two as being the next to go. This, this storyline's actually for their jobs, for the gold streak <laughs> and gold dango. Yeah. Well, um, we uh, let us know what your bold picks are if you're in the chat room um, or, or anything like that. Randy Orton. No. <laughs> Where's Randy? Um, but uh, in the meantime, I w- and we'll come back and we'll, t- we'll talk about some other interesting, interesting things happening in indie wrestling, actually, amongst uh, other former WWE people that used to be on this list that we're talking about today. Um, is that the longest roundabout way I could have put that? We'll find mm, out. No, you probably could have gone longer. No, uh, but <laughs> we want to give a shout out to our friends that have been supporting us here on the show. Our friends Slice on Broadway at SliceOnBroadway.com. They're here in Pittsburgh. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Now 
uh, down at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. They've been supporting this show for a good while now. Uh, feeding our guests in studio. You missed out, Potter. You missed out. I you apologize. Could've... You could yeah, have been up since two a.m. So <laughs> <laughs> the pizza would have. I wasn't going to make it. <laughs> the pizza would have made it better. Look at that stuff on screen. Uh, three locations, of course, our good friends here in Beachview along the tracks slash Jersey Barriers and construction uh, right along Broadway. Hence, slice on Broadway. It's not just a clever phrasing. Um, also, Main Street in Carnegie, PA, and like I mentioned, at PNC Park. If you're checking out a Pirates game, uh, please go check them out. Rico and the guys making some great quality stuff. They deliver. Don't worry about that construction uh, if you're in the South Hills. Check them out. Let them know uh, you heard about them on the Wrestling Mayhem show. Um, some great stuff. I usually don't partake in, in fancy gourmet uh, pies, but their specialty pizzas are, are tremendous, especially that buffalo chicken. I'm getting hungry again. Uh, so, uh, but luckily, I think there's some, I think our guest before left us some uh, over here, so I'm going to be partaking on that on the break. Uh, but go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com, uh, pgh underscore slice on Twitter. And Slice on Broadway on Facebook and Instagram. Let them know. Wrestling Mayhem Show sent you. All right. So let's. There's there's a war brewing, guys. There's a war brewing. Is there? The Dixie invasion. The Dixie invasion is happening, and it's so complicated right now. I'm having trouble keep up, keeping up. Uh, I get there's a post on probably the Mayhem Show group somewhere else uh, about the TNA war. And it's a clip from Evolve. Evolve, we, we don't we, we don't talk about Evolve much here, but it, I think we're going to be more and more. Uh, it, but an interesting promotion. Gabe Sapolsky, Triple H has, has made some appearances. NXT people, uh, they have some connections with this uh, uh, cruiserweight tournament that's going to be coming up this summer. And they had some guests this week where uh, Drew Calloway, the former... Um, uh, Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre. Wait, is it Drew Galloway? Is, is that the right it's name? It's Drew Galloway. Yes. Is that his new name? Okay. Um, <laughs> the fact that you don't know this is a great testament to TNA wrestling. He's their world champion. Uh, yes, by the yeah, way. he is. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and Ethan Carter the third, our favorite Ethan Carter the third. Uh, the fact that you do know who that is is a testament to how great Ethan Carter is. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. I don't even regularly watch it, but I love Ethan Carter. So, But then again, I liked him in, in, in NXT as well. They came out and um, um, after a match with Johnny Gargano, Drew and Johnny Gargano, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and shot. It was a shoot, brother. Uh, Mike Amen, what happened? Well, I, I, I think it's interesting because I actually was there at the Evolve shows at WrestleMania weekend where they kind of started this whole thing with Drew Galloway. Uh, he kind of turned his back on Johnny Gargano saying that, uh, you know, he basically the gist of what he, he his motivation is that he left WWE and went back onto the independents and to the UK and kind of made a new name for himself, which he arguably did, especially in the independents. Uh, you know, he was Evolve champion, all this stuff. And he was upset that WWE was now infiltrating this thing that he's built. And it, it's a very, I mean, it was a very cool kind of, you know, uh, way to kind of transition to a heel turn. Um, so that led to the whole Johnny Gargano through Galloway match that we saw this past weekend and this whole thing with EC3. Um, and basically they kind of cut a promo. Uh, they didn't mention TNA really at all. Um, <laughs> they were smart not to do so. Yeah, because that, well, that's the confusing thing. I mean, obviously they've got a connection in TNA, sort of. Yeah, and, the only and, thing they really mentioned was that the, uh, that he and Drew had both become world champions. Yeah, which I find interesting. Um, but EC3 kind of gave you know talked about NXT and stuff like that, and because especially with this feud being towards Johnny Gargano, who is somebody who has been on NXT multiple times now and has kind of become a regular fixture. Um, and the whole idea is, you know, he talked about how you want to know how to really make a name for yourself, do, you know, relay races and, and get slimed and have six minute matches where you can't do any of your cool moves. Like, and redemption and points. And redemption points. Because uh, 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 many forget Ethan Carter III was the one of NXT at a point in time. Um, but, yeah, he, he talked about that, uh, 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 took a shot at Bill DeMott. Um, yeah, it was, it was interesting. Um, I'm, I took a shot at Triple H, too. 
Yeah, and, and Triple H as well. I think that's extremely interesting. I don't know. Again, I it makes me think, what is WWE's role now in Evolve? Because if this is able to happen, like, is this something that they were cool with? Is this something that they kind of were like, yeah, go ahead and do this? Like, Do you know what this reminds me of? And with the players involved, I don't think it's exactly what's happening. But it reminds me of Jerry Lawler showing up on ECW TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it reminds me of. Because I'm not sure if they're helping Evolve out. I'm sure they have to be on some level to hold, like, the cruiserweight series matches at evolve and stuff like that and for them to be outwardly mentioning wwe on their commentary and everything like that because the commentaries did not mention tna they are mentioning wwe and nxt though mm-hmm. so, well, that, well i think that's the thing though is like you you mentioned like this is like jerry Lawler coming into ecw but that was also kind of a mutual thing between wwe and ecw we know now that they had a bit of a working relationship like mm-hmm. This is two TNA guys, quote unquote, shooting on WWE in an evolved ring, which I find kind of. I wonder if TNA knows about this at all, or, or <laughs> no. well, I'm sure they no, no. I, yeah, Dixie I doesn't believe in evolution. Dixie doesn't believe in evolution, let alone evolve. <laughs> what, was, what was that, Potter? I, I don't believe that they knew anything about it. I think they just did it on their own. Mm-hmm just to create that buzz to get get people talking about TNA because they haven't been talked about for so long. Mm-hmm. Trying to create a buzz again. Yeah, and honestly, even if they did see something about it or really cared about it and wanted to respond, they'd have to wait a month and a half because they already have like eight shows in the can. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, also, I, I again, I posed this question in the Facebook group. Uh, and, and I really want to it, – it, this, this sounds like an easy question, but it, it's also very in-depth as well. Can – at this point, can we finally consider that TNA is an, is an indie? I've always considered them an indie. Amen. Here's the thing. A lot of people <laughs> don't, though, because I think there's a lot of people that still consider TNA to be on the level of a WWE. Not in, in scale – well, listen, I'm, I'm just saying in the, as far as conversation goes. Yeah. Yeah, like there, there's like WWE, there's TNA, and then there's the independents. I, I got, you know what I mean. I have two, I have two sides for that. First of all, uh, the random one is uh, there was a match posted from the Knockouts um, uh, pay per view somewhere. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I was amazed on how little people were in the crowd. <laughs> like I think IWC actually even RWA probably out drew uh, this pay per view. Um, but, um, would not be surprised if it was also bear produced. Uh, well, we'll get back to that. Cause I haven't edited, uh, finished editing the last two yet. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> um, but I remember a conversation that was last year at IWC's night of superstars, Kevin Nash talking to DJ Z about how, when he first came into TNA, they had painted, uh, pictures and they posted like, drawings on the walls of the studio to add more fans because the crowd was so small that they literally designed fans to fill the building. Well, it's like the old studio wrestling, right? Because that's exactly, if you look at old, like the the NWA or probably, I think the Pittsburgh like studio wrestling had this, they were like drawings of fans in the background because they had 30 people yep. in there, right? Like that, that's, yep, ex- that's exactly what he like described. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the other thing is, you know, for instance, we got to talk with Zima on on the show last last year, and uh, thank you, um, and thank you to the person that posted the the Airhorn website uh, last week too. Uh, but um, <laughs> but remember when we were trying to talk to like uh, Luke Gallows? We almost had on the show, and then he's like, "It's right when he was first signing with TNA." He's like, "Yeah." I don't think I can talk to you guys. It's like, right. Like something that's like how WWE would. Do right. Things. And there were other, other weird things in dealing with TNA guys at IWC that are not concerns anymore. Uh, they, they don't have uh, TNA definitely doesn't have any pull. I mean, we're on the third network at this point, right? 
Yeah. Um, like they can't tell the guys, no, we have Fourth a lock on. Fourth, if you count you. Fox Sportsnet. Yeah, exactly. Wait, are we? Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, we have to count that. I mean, you know, the point where they were making power plays with Eric Bischoff, Hulk Hogan, and saying we're going to go to war on Monday night, right? Like, they had momentum, at least, you can say. They could say, you can't do X. Um, whereas now, I'm seeing a lot of abyss in the area. I'm seeing, obviously, DJ Zeno Ion is the IWC champion and doing some pretty crazy stuff and and talking about Absolutely. how free he is right now. Yeah, I've seen his Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, that's no bueno. <laughs> that is a, that is I, a, I had a couple of thumbtacks in my hand from that night. Yeah, we had part of your refereed that match. Uh he had a, a a what was it was officially labeled a street fight. Uh, uh Yes. Yeah, thumbtacks. Yes, yeah, they made it a street fight. Before the match, uh, there's a video out there of them over by my DVD table, and Jimmy DeMarco was yelling for me because I wasn't there. Uh, that, and that. DJZ suplexing Jimmy D on an old woman. Yes, I saw that. I was capturing the ta- <laughs> so I'm capturing the tape, and he's got him on. Is, is that is that that was the suplex off the guardrail? Yes, because yep, into the crowd, but it landed on the old woman. All right, hold on, hold on. Let's not let's be fair. That is not the first time someone has thrown Jimmy DeMarco onto an elderly woman. No, probably no. I know, but still, I was just like, <laughs> I saw him go over, and I just saw somebody. I don't even think that's the person, like the old woman that I saw him hit. Like I'm, wow, get out! It of the knocked way. her over, and then knocked another lady over because it happened literally right in front of me, and the one lady was pinned in a, a pile of chairs. Oh jeez, so they were not too happy. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> The one lady she knows sold it. I miss one show. <laughs> I miss one show in five years of IWC, and this is what happens. It goes to show. It and was a it was a good night. It was, that's what I'm that's what I'm gathering. <laughs> Holy crap! I can't wait to edit this thing. Um. Anyways, there was some point. There's some. What were we talking? Well, no, about? you're talking about like like teenage guys like kind of. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, and that's my big thing is is they don't have a hold on these guys. They're doing God knows what on the indies. Um. I'm not saying that they're an indie. I mean, in, in indie can be independent of WWE. Lucha Underground can be an indie for all we're, we're, we, you know, for all you. I mean, I would consider, consider Lucha, Lucha Underground indie. It's not, I'm not saying indie is a bad thing. But, but you're, you're saying I, I, not locked down, basically. Right, and I think too many people, I think, still lump TNA into that whole. Oh, it's like it's like it's like. Like, even when WCW was dying, like, it was still considered, like, the top two. Right. You know what I mean? Ratings were like, still good, just not as good as they used to be. Right. Like, ratings were still and, great for television, for cable and, and, television. But TNA's never reached that level. So I thought like, maybe maybe 10 years ago when, when you had AJ, Samoa Joe, Christopher Daniels on top within TNA, they were, they were considered a number two, in my opinion. Sure, yeah. yeah. Hands I mean, down. Yeah, absolutely. But I... I, I Nowadays, like you said, when like sort of mentioned, when it's like they're on the third, third or fourth network now. They're you know the guys aren't locked into contracts. You see, you know the the whole rules that they had before about like how you, uh, TNA guys can't work shows with DVDs and stuff like that. And like you know now that's not the case anymore. Uh, you know there's there's you know. But see, I think the thing that was holding a lot of those talents back were you know contracts. And the fact that they were getting paid regularly, yeah, that's not happening anymore. And I think that's the main reason. Like TNA cannot stop these people because they're not getting paid regularly. Right, right. Like it's it's not like TNA can say, "Oh, you can't go perform on ROH TV because you know you're you have a contract to us and we're paying you." Uh, whereas, they can't say whereas, that anymore because there are people who have been owed a lot of money. And I think it's actually becoming um, harder, uh, again, uh, you know, anecdotally, but looking at IWC, uh, you don't see a lot of Ring of Honor guys around. You know, it's harder to get. I, I think it's going to it's harder for you to get a Ring of Honor guy on an indie show than it is TNA right now, because Ring of Honor is like everywhere and doing tours yeah. of Japan and, and doing all this well, stuff. Also- also, certain Ring of Honor guys are locked in the contracts. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Like, that's happening, right? And, 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 and because of stuff like this. And, I, and TNA, I think, just can't right now. So, no, they, they're, they're very much floundering. So, I don't know. In Go Pittsburgh, the, the Ring of Honor guys really didn't draw. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, only only the handful when you had Joe as Ring of Honor champion, he drew big. Mm-hmm. But that was really about it. It was a super niche. And, you know, uh, now having Brutal Bob Evans uh, up, in, up in Clearfield, he was great. But I don't think a lot of people came because they saw Ring of Honor in the middle of, of right. central PA. You know, I, I, I don't think so. Uh, but he was a great person to have there. He was a great person on the show it was a great it was a fun match on the show uh and i got nothing but respect for 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 him from you know first time meeting him there uh but uh you know but you're you're right it's not a draw like i if jay lethal rolled in who's you know i think he would get more people in the seats because he can't he he was black machismo you know yeah he Uh, was also in tna like he was in other companies right well that's just also a thing with different audiences right you know what i mean there are certain audiences that were that where he would be a draw, you know, based off of the stuff he's done in Ring of Honor, you know. But uh, yeah, like like it, it it all depends on the audience at that point. Well, on that point, uh, hey, if you want to check out some indie wrestling, uh, very soon Reloaded will be up there as well. IndieWrestling.us. We got around the indies, a lot of uh, 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 stuff from the weekend. Uh, Matt Collins is putting that together, multimedia, uh, including stuff with Evolve, including stuff with the Internet, International International Wrestling Cartel, a lot of clips, a lot of... There is a lot. You could get a really good preview of Reloaded, Reloaded 2.0 just from looking at the indie wrestling and other Twitter accounts because there was a lot of video from the weekend. <coughs> Um, and then somebody fell over somewhere. Uh, I hope it's not you, Eamon. You're the furthest away. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> go check that out. Uh, plenty of stuff from the uh, International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance. Renegade Wrestling Alliance is going to have a wedding. And from what I understand, it is a legitimate <laughs> wedding with a license in everything in, Sork, in about Sork. two weeks. Tell Chachi that's not the way to go about this. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, Chachi, Chachi, I'm sending to a dance recital that night, so he's not even going to be attending for that. Um, but anyways, things are things are happening around here. But anyways, um, I'm going to miss it because I'm going to be in California, uh, hopefully around some other wrestling that might be happening out there in the next couple weeks. Uh, but... Uh, but Check out all the stuff. Check out all your missing. Uh, Women of Prime, Prime Wrestling's when great names came out of the uh, Cleveland area, including Johnny Gargano. Volume two of his uh, best of over there as well, uh, in conjunction with Joe Dombrowski. Uh, IndieWrestling.us. Sign up for the newsletter. Get updates on the Wrestling Mayhem show and everything else we have coming out. And support indie wrestling. Continue to do that. We are going to uh, go to this video, and we'll be right back. Ah, none. Yeah, you know, just uh, dozens of new friends. Uh, city I want to move to. Um, I consider uh, Pittsburgh my second city, my second family, my second home. Um, yeah, without without. Actually, I got credit Vimmel. I, I know I've told this on one of Sorg's basic Sorg analysis before, but without uh, Vimmel showing that he can visit Pittsburgh and remain unscathed. Um. I never would have visited Pittsburgh, and I never would have met you lovely people, and all of my friends that came from that. Like, uh, I have more friends in Pittsburgh now than I do in the greater New York area, and that is pretty amazing. Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, and that was Mad Mike telling us uh, uh, what, how he was influenced. He's doing the little dance. There he goes. There he goes. He's still being influenced in dance form. Look for the one-man show, Mad Mike's uh, Merry Mayhem Cavalcade, coming to a theater uh, near you uh, uh, with your local cultural trust. Uh, but he's also going to bring us our big question this week. Mad Mike, what's on your mind? Oh, I am Sorg, and I, I have a Big question. Um, it was recently said by Vince McMahon that within the next 30 days, John Cena, Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt, and Seth Rollins are going to be returning to WWE TV. Now, with the exception of Seth Rollins, I think we can all agree we want back on WWE TV. My big question, do we really need those other three guys? Yes. Uh, maybe you could expound on that. Well, okay. Actually, yes and no. Uh, you need one. You kind of need John Cena. Do we? I think you do. 
I don't know. I, I see me personally. I think WWE needs a lack of Cena so that they can learn how to build a new star again. Because John Cena is like that old girlfriend you go you go back to when you're really like bored and alone, and you call the same person that you know will always be there, but at the same time you're not trying to better yourself. Like you're not trying to make improvements on your own life and you're just like, oh, let me go back to this thing that I know is always going to work. See, I feel that way about Randy Orton. I don't necessarily feel that way about John Cena. Well, okay. Can, can we twist the question a little bit then? Because I feel like it's going to, I feel like we're going to go on a, on a very kind of flat thought here. Okay. What would, like, can't, can you get excited for Randy Orton and, and John Cena being mixed up with the new crop of talent? Um, we do have the announcement of, of apparently in Honolulu and somewhere I've been seeing this called Bash at the Beach for some reason. Um, John Cena's taken on Nakamura. Mm-hmm. That has to be enough for you to be like, oh, something's something's up here, you know? Nope. You don't get that with no. Ra- you don't get that with uh, Randy Orton at all. No, God, no. Uh, I, see me personally. I'm not saying John Cena should be let go. I'm not saying that. No. Treat him as an attraction. Because every young up-and-coming star that has run across John Cena has run into John Cena syndrome. Damian Sandow, Bray Wyatt, Kevin Owens to an extent, Rusev. All these guys had big matches with John Cena. And some of them may have squeaked out a win, but most of them all lost. And then after they lose to John Cena... They mire in obscurity and, in some cases, get let go, never to be heard from again. Oh. Like we're we've just finished doing recovery on Rusev or Kevin Owens. Well, here's like, the th- we just finished that. Here's the thing: I think John Cena. While that is true, that that's just a case of what they kind of get. I I agree with making him a special attraction, so to speak. But there is a case where I think John Cena can elevate a talent still. Like, I think his match, for example, when he dropped the belts to Daniel Bryan, even though we had the stuff with Orton afterwards, that elevated Daniel Bryan. That, that completely elevated him. Some would say, you know, he kind of elevated CM Punk to a degree. Obviously, they kind of fucked up some stuff with the whole, you know, Summer Punk. But, like, in a way, he elevated him. There's yeah. still a potential for him to elevate guys. But you're and bringing up feuds and where John Cena ultimately lost. I still think you could do – again, it's just a case of them booking him in a certain way. I don't think John Cena is opposed to building building up to something big and having him lose. They just got to do it. Me, my thing is that John Cena can elevate somebody to that next level. I don't think a Randy Orton can. I I think he can have good to decent matches, but that's not going to elevate anyone. That's not going to make a new star. Uh, Potter, what do you think? Uh, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I would rather see John Cena over Randy Orton only because of that. He would build stars. You give that young guy an opportunity to run with Cena. Let Cena put him over a few times. He gets that rub. He's now become a big star with Orton. I, I just don't see it. But then again, I've never been a fan of Orton's. I think he's overrated and I'm, I'm just not excited about seeing him return same with Seth Rollins. I'm not a fan of Seth Rollins at all. Hmm. I think he got slammed down everybody's throat as being like the next big thing. And I just, I don't think him as a singles guy was, was anything special. Wow. I, I am going to disagree that's with you on fr- that that's one. That's the first I've heard be not a fan of Seth Rollins. Yeah. That, that, you guy, I haven't heard that. Like, Cause I thought, I thought he was a great heel uh, for that run there. Um, I'm excited to see what he what he can do with 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 this new crop. Like I like Seth's kind of the established guy coming back at this point, right? So throw yeah, a game. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Yeah, um, yeah. I and also when when it comes to like the whole thing of like Cena putting guys over or or getting them to the next level, so to speak. I think if it's him, yeah, if it's him, sort of being that guy that's like, oh, I am the established guy, then it can work. My problem is, for the longest time, it's been him, Lesnar, um, you know, uh, Triple H, Randy Orton, in combination, running and leading the shows. Yeah. And that is a case of, 
well, we need these big name talents to rely on. You know what I mean? Like instead of let's take one of our big names, use him, use him well, and have him elevate talents. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. It's just I, as much as I would like to believe that they think they can do that, they're not going to do it. Like it, it's not it's not anything against John Cena. I like John Cena as a performer. I think he brings a lot to the business, but it's how they've been using him. Like, and they're gonna they blame him. they're they, gonna they, blame these low ratings on Roman, mm-hmm. and that's why no, they're, they're, trying to, that's they're why gonna, they're trying to bring in Cena. Actually, they're gonna. I think they'll blame it on guys like AJ. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, can see that. I can see that. Um, well, that shitty mentality. It's that mentality that like. Like, like Jericho went through the same thing when he came to WWE. He was being looked at as, as a, like, he was brought in as a big deal. But for the, for the first, like, four or five months, he was on very shaky grounds. Like, he, you know, they were looking at him with a magnifying glass. And, and you know, the, the established guys in the back were being like, oh, I don't know if this Jericho kid, you know, can deliver. You know what I mean? Like, the, he was being really tested and, and like, kind of pushed in that way. I think there was that one... Um, he was off like one of the pay per views in '99, and he talks about I think in his book or whatever where he's like he's just sitting in the rafters, like taking notes or whatever, and he's like depressed because he's being passed by pretty much. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and that I feel could happen to a guy that's like an AJ Styles or you know um, I'm trying to think with other examples. Um, like AJ is the first one that comes to mind. Dean Ambrose, uh, like a Dean Ambrose and stuff like that. Yeah, like they're the guys that should be the big stars. And should be, you know, but, you know, if it doesn't reflect in the ratings, then, you know, that yeah. tells WWE, oh, we need to rely on these guys. Yeah. Like, I think Jericho is the, like, what they're doing with Jericho is what they should do with John Cena. Oh, absolutely. Here's the thing, because, well, one, because last night, drink every time they said new era. And like, mm-hmm. but, like, <laughs> this does feel it's like a new era, because, and, and I, for some reason, the end zone cast of only comes to mind, but particularly what we had last night, what we had with their debut with the Dudley Boys and the stuff they were doing with the Dudley Boys afterwards, you never see the new anything really kind of school what was what's old. You know what I mean? They never allow that to happen. Even like some of the stuff where like Rock was interacting with the New Day or Rock was interacting with Rusev or Rock was interacting with Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. Like... Like, it's always – Rock's more important. Rock's going to school these guys. Rock's going to show them how it's done. And it always feels like the new stuff is not as good. And I, I think The Rock is on a different level, though, because he's literally just brought in for a one-time performance because he's not an active competitor. Like, right. he's not right. going to wrestle. Right. right, and you have to be great to kind of – Right, you know. right. versus Jericho's there to come in and lose to Fandango to try to make him something. Right. You know. But, like, the fact that they were willing to be like, yeah, like, Jericho's like, you know, school me. Make me look like an asshole. Make me look like an idiot. Like, yeah. But that's his role. I mean, and that's where he's Right. That, that's what the role of somebody who's been established should be. Mm. To a degree, obviously. But, you know, I feel like that hasn't happened for years and years and years in the WWE. It's always what was old is better than what is new. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll see what happens here. Well, hey, uh, uh, let us know your answer to the big question, how you feeling about these new guys uh, coming in here. And, uh, and I'm curious about that. And I'll be curious to see what's happening with all that they've done, you know, building the zoo era and everything like that. Um, I'm kind I, of I, rolling... I also want to make an impassioned plea. Hmm. Please don't have Randy Orton be the person behind Anderson and Gallows. Ooh. Oh, and that was stupid. Please don't. Please Ooh. don't. That was stupid. Please don't do it. <laughs> Please don't do it. I, I'd prefer literally any of those other three guys if you're doing that. Mm-hmm. But please... Please don't give Randy Orton two more lackeys. Randy Orton never needs lackeys ever again. Yeah, no. I, I saw a really good post. Um, uh, not to go off on like a Bullet Club to, like discussion, or whatever. But uh, I don't know if you saw the post that the Bucks made of like this image of like the fact that there's technically Bullet Club in NXT, uh, Lucha Underground. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, Raw, the main roster. And, then, and Ring of Honor. Well, it's a Ring of Honor, New Japan. Uh, like, it was, like this whole thing was that it, was just like a New Japan stable. Like there, there was, wait, who's Bullet Club and Lucha? No, not Lucha. Um, NXT main roster, 
New Japan and Ring of Honor. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, I saw that image well, too, and I thought, yeah, maybe I don't know. Um, no, no, I don't think I don't think Lucha was a part of that. But no, you're right, and I thought that was really interesting. It's kind of to see infiltrated that. wrestling now. Yeah, like yeah, like this idea, right? And 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 I think that's really really interesting. And it'd be, it'd be interesting because they're kind of the new click, aren't they? Yeah. Well, I mean, Bullet Club wasn't it founded basically like as an attitude era ripoff? Not in the immediate beginning. Once the once the Bucks came in, then okay. it was. When it was just Finn Balor, like it was more like Balor's stable of guys. It wasn't a direct end of the rip off. Like it was, yeah. It's it slowly became that, but yeah. Okay. We need to look at. There needs to be because bulk bulk club is this thing that's happened. But I think a lot of people, a lot, a lot, a lot of people were not there to see w- w- how the bulk club came to be, which is a mostly right. New Japan thing, right? Um, that that infiltrated all this other stuff here. Uh, with the Ring of Honor and everything, so I think that's, that's it's only and it's only been around for like maybe three years, maybe three or four years. That's still I don't, I don't that's, four years. That's but a like, while. It's and it's had like three different leaders now. Yeah, be interesting to see. Uh, well, we got a voicemail from our buddy in California. He's at Disneyland and it had a special report. Let's see what Alex Cars had to say. Wrestling man show, Tony Power, clap for your locally world famous. Friend of the show, Steel Power. I'm here at Disneyland. I am about to get on Matterhorn. Roman Reigns has entered Matterhorn. Roman Reigns is being booed out of Matterhorn. That's the scoop here from Disneyland. Alex Stars out. There you go. Now, is this a legitimate thing? I, or no just being funny? I think it's just Alex having some fun at Disneyland. Okay, because uh, I would honestly buy that story. I mean, is, is, is Roman Reigns? Like, I need pictures. Pictures, Alex. Give us uh, some Matterhorn pictures of Roman. And uh, <laughs> that's a whole other story. Um, uh, from there, um, geez. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Uh, thanks, Alex, for that uh, as well. Um Bob Backlund. <laughs> what a transition. Bob, what do I what what else can I say? Bob Backlund. Wrestling is life, Sorg. Wrestling is life. Now you guys told me about this. Now now I everybody told me about this. I saw a post about it, uh, but didn't get a chance to watch the video. I'm like, Bob Backlund, are we watching old TNA promos? And I got worried when I saw that Disneyland was a part of that because I thought he ran into Bob Backlund at Disneyland. Um <laughs> considering. Uh, Did he ask you to name all the fifty uh, capitals of the United States? Yes, yes. So, and and, and I remember Bob Backlund was actually called out a little bit, uh, or mentioned in one of the speeches, and and you saw him at, at Hall of Fame, and it, and it seems like everybody that I noticed at Hall of Fame is like, why don't I see that person anymore? Maurice, Maurice came out. I remember sitting there watching the red carpet special and saying, why isn't Maurice around? She'd be so great at at just Mrs. Side even, right? As she was at the red carpet. Well, look where we're at a month and a half later. Uh, Bob Backlund, like, Bob Backlund, do something, please. And all my wishes, all those little thoughts of myself during Hall of Fame apparently come true, and it's pretty fantastic. You, uh, Eamon, Mike, what, what the heck are they doing with Bob Backlund right now? Sorg, it's so great. It's so, like, I, I said this last night on the wrap-up. I'm going to say it again. They're doing a Donald Trump gimmick mm-hmm. with the person that is – that Donald Trump is least likely to support. Here's the thing, like, <laughs> like I, I, are, are like, I sure? watched the the whole stuff beforehand, War in and Raw. Um, I, but I did watch the ending, and I didn't realize they were playing off the Donald Trump. Let's make America great again. Like, but I don't understand how it correlates. Like, unless I, unless I just don't know anything about politics. But like, I don't get why like. Like somebody being Darren Young's like like life coach makes it about Donald Trump. I I think it's because Bob Backlund has the irrational super American thing down. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Didn't he want to run for office in something? I forgot. Yeah, and he he did, and he he ran for office on WWE TV like back in '94. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And plus, he is a WWE Hall of Famer, and it all works. <laughs> Yeah, Bob Backlund is secretly like my favorite wrestler. I kind of, I kind of want them <laughs> secretly to bring on like an old, like a like a diva from the past, 
and just have her be the Carly Fiorina of this. And I don't know. Like, I think we can get into a whole thing with it. Like, just have someone represent everybody. Like, you can have Big Show be Chris Christie. It'll be cool. Oh, no, let's not do that. Yeah. The, well, again, remember the last time. Well, no, this wasn't the last. Again, this wasn't the last time Donald Trump was featured. I thought it was. I, I was going to talk about that time that they had that fight between him and Rosie O'Donnell. Like, just <laughs> and they had actors play them and have them have a wrestling match for some fucking reason. Like, that. Uh, um, but no, Bob Backlund's secretly my favorite wrestler. Um, that run that he had with the WWF title in like '95 or whatever is like secretly amazing. Mm-hmm. Like where he's talking, he's kind of promos about how he's never eaten marijuana before. Like, <laughs> like uh, he's uh, he's fucking amazing. He's he's because he, he's one of the rare cases. Like people tell you that about Roddy Piper that like oh the, he's kind of like his persona like turned up you know his old craziness. No, Bob Backlund's legitimately fucking crazy. <laughs> and like. Um, I'm entertained by it. I think it's fantastic. I'm really looking forward to seeing how far they're going to take it. Did Did I tell you guys my Bob Backlund story? Uh, I think you may have in the past, but not recently. This, all right. This, this, was, this was years ago. Um, I was attending. I, I was in Florida, and it happened to be the same weekend that TNA was running Victory Road. Mm-hmm. So I bought tickets to Universal. And then got free tickets to Victory Road. <laughs> and um, as we're waiting online, uh, me and my dad went to uh, go see Victory Road. As we're waiting online, there's a partition that separates where the wrestlers come out and where we're waiting in line. And all of a sudden, we just hear loud screaming. We just hear a lot of loud screaming. And um, I'm trying to remember what match he was in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and look it up as I'm talking. Um, basically... <laughs> We hear a lot of loud screaming, and then over the partition, we just see Bob Backlund's head keep popping up and down, screaming at us. God. It was amazing. Like, Again, uh, like he's legitimately insane, and there's something so amazing about that. Like, there's something so unique about that. But like, mm-hmm. there's nobody that that has that level of craziness that you fly. Uh, you know, I I Tony Atlas. If you've had a Tony Atlas experience. I, I not not that it's the same level of crazy or anything that they've used on TV other than like House of Legends, um, or Legends House. I'm sorry, uh, like watching Legends House was like, yeah, that's the Tony Atlas I met. You know, mm. like it's for real, or or maybe Virgil to a certain extent too. Virgil also <laughs> at IWC's Reloaded this past weekend, by the way. Um, yes, he's the first person that I saw when I walked up to the building. <laughs> he's always the first person whenever I get there. I'm like, like nobody else is there. The ring's not even up, and there's Virgil walking around. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> what is happening? He was already set up, ready to go. Yep, yep. He gets and, there and, early. And by the way, the victory road I was at was in back in 2007. It was the Motor City Machine Guns against Bob Backlund and Jerry Lynn. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, it, it, it was a show. It's very, very weird. But he just started screaming at people. I'm now checking out Victory Road history. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm just now curious. Um, well, there you go. And I just woke up a, a, a phone somewhere, too. Um, all right. Well, do but- we think this will actually help Darren Young? No. I don't know. No. This is going to be that weird thing that happens, you know, like. I, is it, you know what? No, no, no. The promos are literally just going to go on for two months, and he's never going to wrestle. With no Bob way. Backlund. I think I think this goes until at least November. Okay. It's going to – it's the equivalent of the, like, uh, the Primo Epico Puerto Rican stuff. Like, how long have we been having those promos? Why is this still happening? Or, or they they reminded us on Raw last night that the Golden Truth um, angle has been happening for the better part. It's been of, on for like, it's been, it feels like it's been going on for like a year. Well, it, it, they said it's been the better part of six months. That's mm-hmm. ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Longest running feud in the company. And they've only had like three matches. <laughs> yes. Yes. I really hope that the Epico and Primo thing is just an ad campaign to get like a pay-per-view to Puerto Rico. I hope that's all it is. <laughs> God. <laughs> they never show up on TV. It's just like, just plugging Puerto Rico. What, okay, here's the thing. Like, side tangent off of this, because I know we're not talking about Bob Ackman anymore. Like, what are they even going to do with that? 
on Monday? Like, how are is they going to – what kind of grand entrance can they make, like, other than, hey, we're Primo and Epico again? I hope they do that and then have Lesnar come out and just kill him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? If Randy Orton brings back Primo and Epico – he pretends to be from Puerto Rico now. I'd be okay with that. I also really love, at least assumedly, that they're like, we're gonna do, we're just gonna do your old gimmick again, but without Rosa Mendez, aka the only good part of your old gimmick. <laughs> wow. Remember when the only thing we would care about about them was that Rosa Mendez would do that entrance where like she shook her ass. Yeah, like, that's yeah. And then we learned more about Rosa Mendez, and now we really don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, well, on that note, I think it's time to learn from all of you and our friends in the chat room. If you guys are out there, uh, let us know what did you learn from pro wrestling this week, Mike. I learned that the Up Up Down Down crew does not share their pizza. Was that a promo from Raw? That was yeah. a promo like, like again, I I had a, I had a section where I had to deal with a client last night, and and I had Raw on just off on on my phone uh, on the side, and I saw I'm like, why is Up Up Down Down on Raw right now? Um, but there you go, I guess. Uh, okay, uh, it's good to see that they're they're promoting it, right? Yeah, they have, they have great videos. Mm-hmm. They they have great stuff on there. Eamon, what'd you learn this week? Uh, I learned from wrestling this week that nothing makes me happier in this world than seeing Ric Flair try to evade evade referees by like acting like he's like a rabid dog, like being like which way I go, like trying to evade them. That was you know, the thing from Raw last night. Eamon, if that was your funniest thing from Raw, maybe you should watch Camp WWE. Yeah, you're uh, gonna love no, Camp no, WWE. No, 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 you might like it then if that if that really amuse you from raw you might like get them in the week. like you gotta yeah. watch it like anything with vents and anything with rick flair like you just gotta imagine like no nah, yeah that's that's something that could happen and just roll with it i so i think i'm the only one that really likes the whole rick flair with charlotte thing i think i'm the only person that likes it i, I liked it I, I liked it initially i think it's i like with i like how ridiculous it's gotten now like rick's like i'm gonna fight natalia like, it's always been like that though like Rick and Paige had a better feud than Charlotte and Paige did. Well, well <laughs> Paige like slapped him around a bit, but yeah. like it was Rick was always kind of like it's still like Charlotte's still gonna fight her. Like, but now he's at the senile point where he's like, I'll fight a woman. I don't fucking care. I think that's just the Ric Flair point. <laughs> yeah, he's like taking his jacket off and removing his cuffs. I'm like, what are you gonna do, Rick? You gonna beat the shit out of his pocket? <laughs> Hashtag Divas Revolution. Potter, what about you? What'd you learn this week in wrestling? What I learned this week is uh, that Raw was so boring to me that I fell asleep, so I I can't really gauge anything off of Monday Night Raw, but I I learned that I still can't stand Virgil. (laughs) That's that's, that's a good thing to learn. (laughs) There you go. There you go. That's it. Just just being around him and just hearing him talk about nothing. (laughs) I understand he had Billy Gunn's ear for a good while. I think that's because Billy Gunn was trying to, I saw the picture you posted. Billy Gunn was trying to steal his gimmick of sitting alone at a table. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I can, I can say this. Uh, the story I was told that somebody overheard was he was talking, I believe with Billy Gunn pointed at the old reloaded poster um, from about a year and a half ago that has Tommy Dreamer on it and a bunch of the IWC guys, pointing at RJ City and says, that guy is running NXT right now and it's fantastic. Or something to that effect. Pointing at RJ City. Now, RJ City, I think, is wearing his jacket in the picture, if I recall. And he th- he basically mistook RJ City for, for William Regal. Oh, I thought you mistook him for Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were trying to figure it out, and we're just like, who did he think he was? You know, and that has to be the case. So, Jesus. I don't know. I guess Billy Gunn wouldn't know who's running NXT, but I, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, I learned that, that, that you got to get out of the way at an indie show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, when I was capturing that, 
I was also watching Game of the Th- Game of Thrones, Game of the Thrones, yeah, Game of Thrones, Game of the, and Game of the Thrones. Um, the main event was out violent, violencing Game of Thrones at the time, and it was catching my attention. So there you I go. I think you caught Game of Thrones on an off week, sort. I think I did too. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, I'm hoping that you guys captured it at the end. When Jimmy DeMarco takes the DDT into the thumbtacks, mm-hmm. as he rolls over onto his back, you just see blood just squirting out of his head. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, it was it was pretty gruesome. I can't wait to edit this thing. All right, we're <laughs> stepping that up on the to-do list. But anyways, <laughs> um, um, on that note, uh, uh, thank you, everybody, uh, uh, for joining us on the show live at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Now on, now on Facebook, although we're realizing apparently we can only do about an hour and a half of the show on Facebook Live. Um, because that stream ends at, at 90 minutes. Um, so, so join us there. You can become part of the show, uh, uh, uh comment on it, uh, join us there and, uh, 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 and, and, and check out all of our friends here. Um, uh, good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or four one two 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 zero six WMS zero. If you run into Bob Backlund at an amusement park, let us know and get him on the phone too. Cause that would be pr- fantastic. Uh, check us out. Patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show, the four Oh five media.com. Our friends over there. Thanks to our friend, basic sickness for the intro and outro music for this. And, uh, check us out mayhem show on the Twitter. Thank you. Of course, uh, uh, Amen, the voice of uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling at Amen yes. Two Please and InspireProWrestling.com. Uh, also now, uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling now available on ProWrestlingTees.com. There so you go. go. Check us out there. We're you Amen, have do you have a shirt? I do not have a shirt. Oh. Um, <laughs> all right, all right. Send your designs for Amen's shirt to Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Send them. They will not be used. Can we, send them can we? Can we? Can we? Can we? just have a, a shirt that's that picture of you in the captain's hat? Sure. Again, you can probably just make that. Like, but in fairness, um, but no, uh, we only have one shirt on there right now. But you should go because we'll be hopefully putting it more there. <laughs> Dude, so if uh, 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 Amen, uh, if 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 I have a proposal on the table to go do a job for a day in in Austin, Texas, if that happens, I'm going to make the shirt and and visit you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Mad Mike, the, uh, the 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 only former WWE of the WWE, but not the only one here that got a WWE paycheck. So I want to make that clear. Uh, at Mad Mike four eight eight three, um, him and Amen. Uh, both do, of course, the midweek war. You guys can check sorry, out. Sorry, sorry, you didn't say it right. What? No, oh, no, it because right. it's your way. It's, it's the midweek war. Only also, you. um, follow hashtag mm on at mayhem show for when I live tweet uh, impact tonight after the hockey game and um, Lucha Underground tomorrow night. Yep, yep. And... Argue with me about impact. Bring it. And of course, thanks his first time on the show, Bobby Williams, referee extraordinaire, ref Potter on the Twitter, and he survived Jimmy DeMarco versus Zima Ion this weekend at IWC's Reloaded 2.0. I'm still picking. I'm still picking tacks out of my boots. <laughs> <laughs> Those tags are real, unfortunately. Uh, so there's go check it thing, out. There's two things certain at wrestling shows: death and tax. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Thank you. A- a- anything else? Any a- 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 places people can uh, uh, see you popping up here in the coming weeks? Yeah, I'm going to be in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, for the JT Lightning Memorial Tournament nice. night two only. Friday night shows are hard for me to do with my day job, so I get to just make it out there for the Saturday night show. I'm looking forward to it. It's the first time I've been back to Cleveland in eight years, almost. Jeez, and, and, and people can find you. You've been a part of International Wrestling Cartel, Pro Wrestling Express in Pittsburgh, um, you know, AIW, obviously. Uh, geez, where, yeah. where, 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 what are what are some of the big places you've popped up? Uh, I've, I've done it. A CZW show back in 2004. Um, they were actually going to use me regularly to do like a like a Kenny type gimmick where I would take like a ridiculous bump every show. <laughs> uh, so my my one night there, I ate a steel chair at the ECW arena, and I haven't been back since. <laughs> <laughs> they killed me completely. <laughs> Jeez, we're gonna thank, to... thank you, Adam Flash. <laughs> 
<laughs> so look out for him and hit him up on the Twitter. Ask him your refereeing questions. And like I said, check out that 1SW podcast. Uh, you had some really good conversations there about the importance of referees. So, which yeah, I know. I, absolutely. Thank you for that. No problem. No problem. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us in the chat room. Everybody else, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. You guys are cool.